Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Do you do a lot of monogramming? If not, you probably should because it's really popular. In today's uh, tutorial, Lightburn tutorial, we're going to talk about cutting, welding, joining, and making professional quality monograms. So stay right there. We're about to get started. All right, so if you're not doing monograms, not doing personalization, you're not making money. That's the way I feel about it. Um, monograms, personalization, that's the market to be in with a laser engraver. Whether you're doing coasters or whether you're doing keychains or whether you're doing plaques and signs, uh, you know, personalization is where the money is at. And if you need ideas on what to personalize, you can just jump on Amazon and search personalized. You can search personalized wood, personalized uh, coasters, uh, personalized gifts, and you'd be shocked. You'd really be shocked at how many personalized items there are for sale on Amazon. And you can also do it on Etsy. So today we're going to talk about something different. It's still personalized. It's going to be monogramming. And I see a lot of people have questions about, um, you know, how to cut shapes and weld shapes and put together a monogram. And it's really very simple. Um, we're going to, we're going to cover it very quickly today, but I've never done a complete video specifically on monogramming. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's jump over into Lightburn and get started. All right, here we go. So, uh, a lot of people ask, you know, how do I make something like this from nothing? And uh, one of the things you want to do is get some fancy fonts. You can get them for, you know, for free uh, at freefonts.com or dafont.com or just search out free fonts. And so let, let me show you how you make something like this. Let's go ahead and delete this one and do it from scratch. Uh, we're going to start with that one. And... So let's go ahead and activate the text over here. And we'll type out uh, Martin over here, since that's what we had on the screen a moment ago. And then we'll move that off to the side. Now we'll just activate the text again, type the letter M. And what we'll do now is change this font. And the one that I just, just showed you was a fancy font. It was flower garden so there it is right there and this is why I say get yourself some fancy fonts because you know you can get some nice stuff and this isn't the best font that there is if you take a look at it you'll see that it's drawn pretty wacky uh, the person that created this font didn't do a great job and if you wanted to you could um, you know go into the node edit and edit all of this and make it perfect but that's not what we're going to do today what we're going to do today is we're going to create what i showed you earlier so now we have our big m and we have our martin down below okay let's make this a little bit bigger and now we need to cut a piece out of the middle here so let's go ahead and just take a a, a rectangle we'll activate the rectangle on the top left side here and we'll just drag across here and determine and now we can either press escape or activate the selector tool one or the other we need to determine what size we want these letters to be and i think i want so let's do that let's make these a little bigger i think i want them like about that big right there so will that fit in there yeah it will and that's perfect so what i'm going to do now i'm going to select the m then i'm going to press down shift and select the box and I'm gonna come over here to well let me do something different let's jump up to tools and let's come down to the boolean assistant right here and bring that up and this way you can get a preview of what you want so you see this is all the different cuts that you can make with this 
uh, particular rectangle. So if you wanted to have a border on it, you could make the cut like that. If you wanted no border, you'd do a difference, A minus B. Okay? So the union works sometimes, but you'd have to size it properly before you do the union. We're just going to do the cut today to show you how I made the one you saw in the beginning. So I'm going to click on that and say OK. And there we have our cut. Now we can take our name, Martin, and bring it up in here. Now the only thing that we need to do now is join these two shapes together. So I'm, I'm going to want the name to be a little bit bigger like that or actually I'll do it just like the one we we saw in the in the beginning and I'll just bring this up a little bit and bring this one down a little bit and what you want to happen here is you want this line here to cross over this line here so in order to do that we have to come up to here okay and on this side we have to come down to here and it's crossed over there. Now you just need to make sure that it crosses over everywhere because some places are going to be smaller than others. See how this one's up high and this one's down low? And as long as they're all touching everywhere, you can go ahead and maybe this might be a little too wide. Let's see. No, it comes to the end. Basically, you want to get to from the end of this should be parallel with this. And the end of this should be parallel with this. So maybe this does need to come over just a slight bit like that. Now we can just drag over both and weld the two. And if we go into fill mode, you'll see that we've got what you saw when we first started. Slightly different because it's a different size. But that's what we got. And that's what we'll actually preview up here. That's what we'll burn. On whatever material that you're using and of course you'd spend a little more time to make this look better choose better fonts <laughs> you know but uh, there's your your basic cutting an M now another question that um, I've gotten quite a bit is uh, you know how do I cut names out of another name and that's quite easy as well so let's get rid of that one and let's just take the whole name, uh, Martin, like that. And let's make this bigger. Let's say we're making a sign. And uh, Mr. Martin has three children. If you're wondering why this is filled, when, when I put it into fill mode here, uh, it's because I have my screen over here. If you click on window, I have it set to filled. So, Fill Coarse or Filled Smooth will give you the preview on your desktop, whereas either one of the wireframes will not. You'd have to actually go to Preview to see what it's going to look like. But I choose to use a little more system resources and get the preview as I go. So, let's get going now with the kids' names. So, if we take and we do the kids' names, and let's make this a reasonable size, Let's go about 35 on the font size and do something like, um, well, I got to click on the screen first. We'll do something like Jamie and Brad um, and Tina. <laughs> I don't know. Make it up as we go. Let's put this into line mode. So line mode is design mode. So keep that in mind. Line mode is design mode. Anything that you're designing, you always want to have in line mode. So now, uh, what do we do now? So we want to activate the selector. We want to cut this out of that. But if we do it the way I just showed you, it's going to look absolutely horrible. It's going to be overlapping. You won't be able to read the, the names or anything like that. So let's go ahead and go on the left side over here and let's find the offset tool and let's activate that now oh then then that's a perfect size right there two so anywhere from about 1.5 to 2.5 is going to work well we want it to be outward the offset 
we want it to be round to follow the shape and uh, we always want to keep this on select resulting objects because it automatically selects it when you um, when you say okay so now we say okay and you can see that it's automatically selected that we do have it in the wrong place so we have to select all of them okay so let's go ahead and bring this up to about the area where we want it to be and I would say it's right at the beginning of the or at the end of the M and at the beginning of the N so something like that maybe might be nice and let's hold down the control key and drag it out so it drags out proportionately like that say maybe there looks good right now what we're gonna do we're just going to select let me zoom way in here so you can see this we're just going to select the outer offset that we just created okay you'll see that this is one piece all by itself all right so we're going to select that outer offset we're going to hold down shift and we're going to select the text the big text and then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here on the left and weld them together. Now, if we come out of design mode and go into preview mode, you can see what we've got. And that is the way that it's going to burn. So you'll have all of these uh, names will be legible and readable as well as those and it doesn't interfere with the background letters so that's that's just how easy this is to do and of course um, I probably wouldn't do it this way what I would probably do is I would probably take and change this font to something you know a little little nicer like that and then and probably the best thing to do would be to select both and bullseye them to begin with so you know that it's in the exact middle and then we can just select those uh, names in the middle and do the same thing do the same offset like that now the offset is selected we select this one and weld it and I think that would look probably a little better yeah so that looks a little nicer <laughs> and that's the way it'll burn and uh, you can see that it's completely distinguished from the background and I had a lot of people that would ask me and uh, this is just so simple to do and a lot of people would um, ask you know wow uh, I, I've tried to do what you did but uh, it didn't turn out right and probably the mistake that they're making uh, I would guess is that when they get to this point and they've got the offset selected okay they select everything and weld it and you'll see that's where they make their mistake so you can't select everything to weld it so now you know you can only select two shapes and weld them so those two shapes we just selected three and welded them that's why it didn't come out right we're just going to grab the outside well, now we have to undo what I just did. Um, there we go. We're, we're just going to grab this outside offset that we created right here. So now you see, you see the Vegas lights going around. That means that it's selected. But this one is not selected. And that's what we want. We just want to select this one outer shape. And then hold down shift. And then drag up and select the big text. And that's all we want to weld and we'll come over and weld it and that's what we want so that's where the error a lot of people are making is is you know not just not welding the two shapes together they're trying to weld three now what do you do with something like this um, coasters I think are the best you know probably the best seller not necessarily for this one 
but if we go back to uh, the original one, let's go back and do do the original one again. And this time I'm going to do my name. So uh, I'm going to use a regular weird looking le uh, letter like that, which is the F. Okay, and I'm going to go back into line mode because line mode is design mode. And I think I'll make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to take some more text. And I'm going to bring that down to um, 35. And I'm going to type. Oh, I need to click first. <laughs> I'm going to type my last name like that. And then what I'm going to do is just grab both of these and bullseye it and see how it looks. And that doesn't look good. So, uh, you have to figure out where you want to put it. And I don't think I would do it this way on this one because we're going to, we're not uh, creating the box this time and slicing out the middle. We're going to try and use this text to weld into the F. And I think I can do that like right about there might look good. What do you think? That could work. So let's give that a shot. Now, let's do our offset. I'm going to leave this at 2. That 2 looks good. Now you'll see that the outside line only is selected. I'm going to press Shift and select my letter there. And I'm going to weld those together and take a look and see how it looks. So you see here, you can really experiment with this. You don't necessarily have to cut that box out of the middle of the letter only if you want to so uh, this would look just as good on a coaster with you know the last name being spelled out with the natural look of the slate or the natural look of the wood and the uh, capital letter in the background burning away the substrate um, you know I think it would look fantastic so let's get rid of these and do just one more. Just stay with me here. Let's go ahead and do the most popular um, monogram that people are looking for. And uh, let's do a W. And let's go ahead and put it into Sentry. And I'll make it just a little bit bigger. And let's go into line mode. Because line mode is design mode. <laughs> All right. And let's take and take our box. And draw our box across here. And select it. And let's bullseye the two. See how it looks. And we'll see that uh, we've got one, two boxes coming out from the end there. And we've got one, two boxes coming out from, oh, well, we did a pretty good job right there. And I think it's in a perfect spot. And you really want to look at this and figure out, you know, is this box in the right spot? Because maybe you might want to want to have it lower. You might want to have it higher, you know. So what do you think? What do you think is the best spot to put this in? And I think mm, that looks probably good right there. So let's go ahead and let's weld these two. And while uh, we've got this welded, um, we're going to take some text here. Just click in the middle. Oh, 196. No, <laughs> we don't want it that big. Bring it down. Uh, let's say let's say we do. Uh, I always do that. Why do I always do that? <laughs> We're going to do Williams. And maybe we'll, uh, again, choose a different font. And I guess we'll bullseye that to put it directly in the center. And then we'll manipulate this font by holding the control key to bring it up to about the right size. Something like that. And this is probably the most popular one 
if we look at it where you burn out it's called a relief cut where you're burning out the background and leaving the foreground in the natural state here uh, and that looks really superb on a coaster um, to give you an idea if we were to draw out oops I didn't hold the shift key if we were to draw out a circle and let's say that was the coaster and then put this behind it and then we were to let's put this into line mode because we're designing and offset the circle just a bit and now you'll see that that uh, is probably one of the most popular uh, ways to do something like this make a coaster like that but um, if we didn't do that then what we would have is the background being burned away and the name being burned away so you see that you can manipulate this in many different ways just by creating additional layers uh, even though it's the same layer uh, what we've done is we've we've move this here which changes that this to a different um, style you might say so there it's relief and there it's not the background is relief and uh, if we were to do that again so let's take the outer circle and offset it and then switch back into fill mode again you see that there are two layers three layers here so even though we're on the same layer technically we're creating additional layers and by doing so changes the entire look of the graphic and you could even have you know an offset look like this which looks pretty nice too as well and you could do that again <laughs> just to show you by selecting this one and offsetting it and coming back into fill mode now we have an additional one here that we can move over to here and look at how the design changes so dramatically so uh, you can create some really interesting um, monograms this way just by using layer upon layer or item upon item I should say it really is the same layer but each of these is a different item which changes the look entirely of the monogram itself now you can't tell me that's not a really good looking monogram just like that and you know just manipulating this around you know you can you can make things look entirely different and this gives it more of a three-dimensional look so there you go that's that all you have to do is play with these layers and by playing with the layers you can come up with all different types of effects um, you can use a, a square and offset it into a smaller square and then join those two together and then draw a square over the top right corner weld those together draw another one over the top left corner weld those together bottom left corner bottom right corner weld them all together and then you can offset that shape and get a really interesting pattern of you know the boxes being black and the lines between them and the uh, monogram in the middle there's just so many things that you can do uh, with this monogram with these different I guess shapes in the same layer I think I think I'm probably explaining it wrong uh, when I'm calling them layers but technically you know in any other software program they would be layers uh, in this software program they're shapes but we're using them like layers and I've done coasters with as many as eight different layers to give a, a patterned look around the outside that looks really nice. And uh, I remember one in particular, I wish I had a picture of it. It was a, about two years ago. Um, no, it was about, yeah, about two years ago. And it was a 
square that I turned just a little bit sideways and actually what uh, what I did was um, I created an array of squares going around one square in the middle and then one at a time I had to zoom way in and do this it took me like 20 minutes to do it but one at a time I welded one to the other all the way around and then when I was finished, I had the one shape with all the different points on it, and I offset it, and it came out fabulous. Uh, I mean, it was just beautiful. So play with these with these different shapes, and don't uh, get stuck on just having, you know, um, the monogram with a circle around the outside. You know, get creative with it, because you you can become as creative as you can possibly imagine with these things and create things that people have never seen before. And that's what's going to make them sell. Uh, you know, when I used to sell these uh, coasters on Facebook Marketplace, I would put an ad up with, you know, two or three different samples and, uh, you know, your name here kind of thing. And I'd have two or three different styles. And they were sort of styles that people don't normally see anywhere and I can tell you that you know two or three hours up and I would take enough orders where I would run out of my uh, slate my slate coasters and I'd have to pull the ad down and I, I even had people that uh, would email me when's the next time you're going to be doing the coasters <laughs> so uh, you know waiting in the wings for the next time that I'm going to be doing the coasters can you send me an email or send me a message the next time you're going to do them. And, uh, you know, you can really get get very creative with this. And I suggest that you just sit down and play with it at first. And get some ideas. You know, uh, weld circles into squares, into pentagons, into, you know, uh, into arrays and everything else. And just play with it. Because once you learn how to do this, you're going to say, oh my God, this, I can create some really outstanding designs with this. And that's one of the things I really love about Lightburn as compared to using a software program. Uh, in the software program, it's never going to import into Lightburn or any other laser um, control software exactly like you did in Photoshop or Corel or anything else. Uh, and you're not going to be able to do the type of manipulation that you can do with Lightburn. This is a true design program. Once you learn how to do it and practice it a little bit, it's like anything else. You have to learn how to do it. You have to practice it. Practice makes perfect, you know. So <laughs> I know that's an old, that's an old one, <laughs> but um, you know, take some time to learn it. Have fun with it, and I bet you you can get more than anybody. I used to sell my coasters for. Six to eight dollars. I started at six dollars a piece and I went to eight dollars a piece. So, because they sold so well, people will pay. Uh, trust me when I tell you, people will pay for personalized gifts and people do pay for personalized gifts. I mean, I, I got a ring engraved before I had the fiber laser. Uh, I guess it was a couple of years ago, way before I had the fiber laser. I had, I had a ring engraved on the inside for somebody. And um, I think it was $22. Now, now I can do it on my fiber laser in about three minutes. So that person made $22 in three minutes at the jewelry store by engraving that. And the same thing goes with this. Uh, you know, don't sell yourself short. Make sure you get your profit out of this because you're designing something that nobody else can or has before. So take advantage of that. Sell it for the right price. Get some practice in. Get some ads up on Facebook Marketplace or Etsy or wherever it is that you're selling and sell some of these because there's a lot of money to be made in personalized goods. And coasters, especially slate and wood, are really big sellers. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.